Well, I actually think it's really interesting because in the panels that I've been at the conventions, not all artists actually read the uh, the books or or stories that they're illustrating, and it's it was a great thing to hear. Pretty much every single one of you say, "Yeah, I read this story, and this is what I came up with." Um, so, yeah, how does that affect your 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 illustrations when you are actually having to? Do you get the whole story, or do you just get a portion of the story? How does that work? My preference, oh. <laughs> My preference is to have the whole story and to read it because I find I'm able to, uh, my creative process is different when I'm able to read through it and find my own favorite little tidbits and, and symbols and imagery, images. Um, uh, that's my preference versus just getting an art brief, which sometimes also is what you get and you're able to work with and I'm able to work with that as well. But I love being able to find my own favorite little bits and things in the story. Right, right. John? So I think I, the way I look at it is, um, you know, it's almost like you're trying to take a story and treat it as if you're introducing a friend to a bunch of friends. Uh, you know, if you're going to introduce somebody to a bunch of friends, you don't talk about the first couple of bad things that you want to share with them about someone. You, you always try to pick out a couple of strengths of their character or things that the other people would find interesting. And that's kind of the way I think about it when I'm doing a piece of cover art. I am, I am trying to introduce this story to a bunch, to an audience. And so I'm, it's, it's always gonna be personal for me. I'm going to read that manuscript or read whatever part of the manuscript I can get to find what connects with me and I'm not anything special or unique. I'm, if, if it's special to me, it's hopefully gonna be special to a lot of other people. So I'm trying to find a couple of touchstones and use those as the springboard for how I'm going to create a visual to connect it with that audience. I'm, I'm never thinking about a story in terms of how do I connect this with the biggest audience possible. I'm trying to make it personal, connect it with the people who I think will talk about that story with a real passionate word of mouth. And then hopefully it'll spread like a virus from there. Um, that's kind of how I start off looking at these things. Right. Tommy, you mentioned uh, the Gideon books. And so, um, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> you mentioned the Gideon books and um, I know there's two out now and you've read them. And the, do you, have you had feedback from people who, I know there's a big following for those books. Um, I've tried to understand those books, <laughs> they're just, <laughs> but have you had a lot of p feedback from the following from the Gideon books? Uh, feedback in what way do you mean? About yes. how they like the book or how they like yeah. the art? Does the art resonate with a lot of the people reading it or? Apparently. <laughs> um, it, it's fun to be, uh, like Alyssa mentioned, the first to read something and get a chance to respond to it. When I talked earlier about an artist being a channel, uh, and I think that's what um, John and Galen both mentioning too, when you know they talk about reading it and what they get from it. John mentioned that maybe he's not all that individual. Uh, but on the other hand, he is quite individual. And so that's where we really all have our art directors to thank. A number of us have mentioned clients that we work for. The art directors, uh, like when Galen said that there's a, you know, sometimes just a brief, we have to trust our art directors to know what kind of things from our art we're going to respond to and then channel out into the world properly to call the right people. And so um, that's why I said I just feel quite thankful to Irene for reaching out to me to channel that story because it was exactly my kind of story. It had highly competent, confident, sarcastic, witty characters. It had high action, but it wasn't about action. It had tons of incredible mystery. There was all these great things. So then the problem becomes, well, what do you show? Um, what I always tend to focus on is character because the strength of will in a character is what I always really respond with uh, to and try to kind of like a... I don't know, like an object reflecting light, just put that back out in the world. So I was just like, I'm not going to hold back on this. Let's just go. She's strutting right at the camera. She's looking right at us. She's like maverick. She's got the glasses. She's smirking, you know, everything. There's stuff exploding all around her and she's literally dissolving from the legs up, but she seems happy and cool with it. Um, and, you know, even talking about it now, you can tell this stuff just gets me excited. And so um, with that one, I was able to read the book, but not always. Um, and when an art director reaches out to you, you just have to trust that they want you to be selfish and channel what you think is cool. So even if I don't get to read a story, I try to take all those thoughts and go, what, what if that, but just like this time, it's a totally different culture and character. Well, I'll just same energy. 
And I think each of us, we all, you know, we've all mentioned respecting each other, but all, everybody here has a very specific note, a sound um, that they produce that no one else can quite make. And that's what gets them hired. Um, I don't really know if I have more to say on it than that. Your voice, uh, yeah, I'm on mute. Your voice actually really fits that story. And so when I saw the cover, I was like, of course, that really resonated well with the, the storyline of that book. So um, Alyssa, do you, do you have any? <laughs> sure. Uh, actually, just as a side note, I also read that book and I really liked the cover. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you. Sorry, wow. I'm saying embarrassing things on camera. Um, yeah, I, well, I already mentioned this, but I really like getting the full manuscript. Um, not because I don't enjoy uh, getting the distilled brief, but just because um, sometimes when you're reading, you get to see like not only what happens, but also like what the author is trying to say. And sometimes those are two different things. So it's a little bit easier sometimes to glean that from the full manuscript. And even if like what they're trying to say is not something that will necessarily work best as a cover um, and maybe a scene would work better. Uh, sometimes you can work in little hints of that to the final image. So it just helps kind of make the image a little bit more personal to the story if I can, if I can swing it. So. I just want to jump in and say, I totally agree. It's all that the texture of the story, all the other things that it's our job to put into like one tiny moment. Cause we don't have the luxury of pages and pages to tell. So, I love what you said about finding the things that they're talking about that they're not talking about and getting those feelings into the art too is, I don't, that's part of the reason that I find uh, covers especially to be this nice high art form and the stuff that Yuka works on, especially that's not always in our field where it's more about the ideas too and editorial. If I can see a picture that she's done and understand what the article is going to be about and how it's going to feel just from the pictures and then I read it and it feels that way. Oh man, there's something really thrilling about that. So I'm really, I'm really like glad you said that. Yuko, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so um, I also try to read every manuscript uh, if it's available. Sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes, like, it has happened to me that, like, you know, they are almost done with the covers and, like, you know, almost going to print and something happened and they needed to, like, quickly change the cover. Like, of course, I can't read it. And so I asked for, you know, a few paragraphs. But, like, the mood and tone of the story and the little moments like you know some of you mentioned like you can only get it if you read it and every book if you know every artist is different and every writer is different every writer has those tones different sounds they make and that can only get through reading so i try and also like it's my hobby to read 